Starting now, you can get a transcript of each week's Rich Dad Radio Show. Just visit www.richdad.com radio and download a copy today. This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. It's Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. So uh, we have a very exciting program. I think possibly the most important program you can listen to, especially as we go into the new year. And it's about a subject called being rich and happy. Or should I say richer and happier. So how many of you out there would like to be richer and happier. So this is the program for you. And you're going to find out some things that you may have never known, but you've all kind of suspected, like, why does going to school make me so unhappy? You know, for years, I was just miserable in school. And on top of that, I learned nothing about money. And I could never understand that. But for those of you who are the academic A students, this is your program for you. Because you're going to find out that what you were taught in school probably makes you miserable. Uh, Kim, any comments? <laughs> <laughs> oh, said so well. We have a really, really special guest today who's going to be talking to us about what it takes. And, and well, first of all, why people come out of school. Oh, some people do like some, me. Well, most like 80% of people come out of school not real happy, not sure of where they're going. And not okay, healthy, I, not healthy in mind and spirit. And I, I went in smart and came in stupid. Yeah, came that's, out stupid, that's, so. be, <laughs> and we're going to find out all about that. So this, uh, our author today, his name is Sean Acor. He's been on our show before and he wrote a brilliant book called The Happiness Advantage. And if you have not read that, read that book. Sean is a, a brilliant writer and now he has a new book and the new book is called Big Potential, How Transforming the Pursuit of Happiness Raises Our Achievement, Happiness and Well-Being. So if you want achievement, happiness, and well-being, this is your show. And on top of that, you know, Sean now has a distinction to be calling the guru of happiness. And let me tell you something. That's really, really, really important because I don't know if you know this, but um, depression rates are going up. Kids are getting depressed younger. Uh, drug use is going up. And suicides go up. And you go wonder, well, how can that be when we have more money? We should be happier. We've got iPhones. We've got cell phones and all this stuff. But where, what's happening to happiness? And what you're going to find out is that happiness is a team sport, which we always say at Rich Dad, business is a team sport. But also many of the so-called habits you pick up in school cause you to be unhappy. And, so, it, and it's actually backwards, and Sean will explain this. It's backwards of how we measure potential. Correct. It's actually backwards, and we've got it wrong. And so we're going to look at it just from another point of view. It's not wrong. It works for guys who are, who are academics. So Sean is a uh, Harvard graduate and all this, so he knows what he's talking about from that side. He's taught happiness to you know thousands of very bright people. He's worked with the Fortune 500 companies, and he travels around the world speaking about how to be happier. So welcome to the program, Sean. Welcome, Sean. <laughs> Thank you so much. So uh, would you tell us really quickly, first of all, going to happiness advantage, because I was talking to about the Tetris effect and all this stuff. I remember that book clearly because, you know, that saying that if I have the money, then I'll be happy. So Kim and I have all the money we want, but we weren't any happier. So mm -hmm. can you kind of explain your what you found out in your first book, The Happiness Advantage, especially the Tetris effect, because that's the one that really, that really gets me down, should I say? Yeah, well, I love what you're saying is that people could go to school and they would learn all this information, but they might not ever learn about money. And I, I actually spent 12 years at Harvard um, University where they had, you know, every subject and they'd have these brilliant kids and they were not teaching money and they weren't teaching about happiness either. <laughs> they weren't, they were assuming that once you were successful and once you had this incredible job, and once, you know, you start making all this money, of course, then happiness would follow in your life. And yet we found that 80% of those students were depressed. And as I started traveling around the world doing this research, we started realizing that, that story was not about Harvard. It was about every brain in the world. As we pursue happiness, we were using the wrong formula. We thought if we work harder right now, then we'll be much more successful. And as soon as we hit some financial goals or as soon as we become a CEO, or as soon as we are a New York Times bestseller, then we'll be happier. And it turns out that formula never works. When we did the research, we were finding that that wasn't the case at all, that increased levels of success 
wasn't creating happiness like we thought it would. I mean, if that was true, right, all of our, all of the celebrities would be happy, all of the movie stars, every single rich person would be incredibly happy, and we weren't seeing that happen. But if you flipped it around, if we found that if people could find a way to raise their levels of optimism and happiness right now in the present as they're starting a company, as they're sitting in a classroom, as they're raising a family, if they could raise their levels of happiness now, every single success rate rises dramatically for them. Their sales rise by 37%, their productive energy by 31%, they become smarter, faster, live longer, stress has a lower impact upon them, um, they're able to, uh, uh, they're three times more creative. Literally every single business and educational outcome improves when the human brain is positive. So the question then becomes, how do we become more positive? Because I think you're absolutely right. We, we train our brain to look for mistakes and errors. We train our brains to look for threats. And that's what the Tetris effect was you were describing. The Tetris effect was if you play this game called Tetris, making straight lines for five hours in a row, people were ending up dreaming about Tetris. And they were walking around the world looking for how to make straight lines. And what we found was the same thing was true with our lives, that if we spend our life doing conservative risk analysis or watching the news, looking for all the negatives, um, don't tell me about the positive, it's already good, just tell me about the negative. Or if you open your inbox and look for the fires you need to put out first, or that's where you start your meetings, it turns out our brains become experts at scanning the world for the negative, and it steals resources from the part of our brain that sees opportunities, sees the things that we're grateful for, and finds the way of making it so that we could actually improve in the world. So what we're trying to do is create a new Tetris effect, a new pattern for the brain, where you train your brain to look for the things that are going on right, the things you're grateful for on a daily basis. If you can practice positive habits now, every single success rate rises dramatically for you, which is why happiness is such an advantage. So the, so really the premise of the book is not when I become successful, I'll be happy. It's when I become happy, then I'll be successful. Yes, exactly. That would have been much faster. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I like your. I like your explanation. <laughs> so, Sean, uh, 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 can, like all of our group has studied happiness advantage, and I thank you for writing that book. And your next book, which is Big Potential: How Transforming the Pursuit of Success Raises Our Achievement, Happiness, and Well-Being, and it was just released on January thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Uh, as you may know. They always talk about this, the engine of the world are small business guys. Well, also the engine of the world, they're the ones who get screwed the most, you know. The, uh, this this let, let us tax thing with Trump, the small guys, they're happy they're getting a temporary tax break, but the rich guys get a permanent tax break. And that's something that people don't realize that by going to school, getting a job, and then becoming a doctor or a lawyer or self-employed, I mean, you're just a target for the rich. I mean, that's what happens to you. So tell us how you came about with Big Potential. Well, I love that you're doing this work and trying to get the message out that we really need to protect those people that are working individually because I think that they're under an incredible strain. Oh. It's not just a tax strain or a financial strain. I think that they're under an emotional strain as well that's limiting our potential because when we try to pursue happiness and success alone, we actually miss out on the majority of human potential. While I've been doing all this research, um, doing the happiness advantage, you know, I've gone all around the world to 50 countries over the past 10 years sharing this research. And during that same period of time where I've been so excited to share this happiness research, depression rates have doubled. Um, suicide rates for every single age group have doubled. The suicide rates for eight-year-olds have doubled. And when I saw this data, I was out at the, the Center for Disease Control at the CDC, and they were telling us this data it just broke my heart that what could be happening to an eight-year-old that's causing them to feel such a strain within their life. Yes. And what I started to realize is we made happiness into an individual sport. We made it so that happiness is an individual choice. You have to do it by yourself. If you want to get ahead in life, you need to do self-help, right? You have to do habits in private. You need to work by yourself to try and build something all by yourself so you can know it's yours. And what we found is that the majority of human potential is, actually interconnected, not isolated. So we've been actually studying potential completely wrong in academia, right? So we judge people on creativity we get to test them. We give them a test by themselves sitting in a room all alone. But your creativity changes based upon the people that are around you, right? Your intelligence changes based upon the people that are around you, which is why you want to surround yourself with creative and smart people. 
So we need to stop measuring and pursuing potential in isolation. We actually need to see how we connect to the people around us so that we can lift up our potential by connecting to that ecosystem of potential around us. What that means is wait, wait, the greatest so, predictor- so Sean, so Sean, yeah. and what, what we're saying here is, for example, in school, I was talking to my, you know, my, my friend uh, Blair Singer, who was working with Super Entrepreneur, is he says, you know, it's, it's, really, it's really true. Happiness is a team sport. And I said, yeah. That's why in school I was really happy when I was cheating. And I was unhappy. <laughs> I was unhappy when I was told I was stupid all the time. And he just cracked up, you know, I said, because it's really so much more fun to operate in a team. But in schools, like you say, at, especially at Harvard, the best of the very best, is that those guys generally operate on their own. And in, in your book, you were talking about how most students, because you were a freshman, you know, ad- adjuvant for a freshman, they all want a separate room. They don't want to have a roommate because they're so conditioned to do it on their own. Is that correct? Yeah, you're absolutely. They wanted rooms by themselves so they could eliminate all distractions. When actually, the greatest predictor of their being successful at Harvard was actually their social connection, their breadth, the depth, and the meaning in their social relationships. So when we try to do things by ourselves, not a not only does it short circuit our happiness, but we actually never see our big potential. And that big potential is the part of our potential we can only get by connecting to other people. Amen. Amen. Everybody hear that, because when we come back, we'll be talking to Sean again, because the name of the book is Big Potential. And for those that read my book, The Cash Flow Quadrant, you know, most entrepreneurs are small. They're separate. They're under 500 employees. I mean, how do you get ahead all by yourself? But that's what we're taught to do in school and at home and things like this. So we come back, we're going to be talking about not only about being bigger in business and business being a team sport, but so is happiness. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Don't be like Charlie. Charlie is that do-it-yourselfer who does himself in. Do-it-yourself is good for tile and grout. It is not good for asset protection. Charlie thought he'd save a few dollars forming his LLC online. With no guidance, he did it wrong. When he sold the property, he lost thousands and thousands of dollars. He did himself in by trying to do it himself. Don't burn yourself. Use Corporate Direct to set up and maintain your LLCs and corporations. Corporate Direct is owned and operated by attorney and rich dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. Garrett wrote the bestsellers, Loopholes of Real Estate and Start Your Own Corporation. He is Robert Kiyosaki's attorney for asset protection. He and his team will do it right. Visit them at CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention Rich Dad and receive $100 off your formation fee. That's CorporateDirect.com. CorporateDirect.com. Log on to RichDadRadio.com while you listen. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. This program is about, it's about happiness and how so many people today where happiness is going down, not up. And the more they have, the less happy they get. And so happiness is a team sport. Unfortunately, in our academic system, a team sport is called cheating, which I was pretty good at. But it, it was called, you know, it, it was called a multidimensional approach to answering the same question. And I was very good at it. And I do the same thing in business today. So when people say you're so successful, I said, no, no, I was, a dumb, I was a dummy in school. They go, no, no, you have to be the smartest guy. I said, I was never the smartest guy, but I always had a smart team. And now what Shauna Core is doing with the big potential is about how happiness and success are really team sports. So once again, you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android, and you can listen to those programs at richdadradio.com. We archive our programs at richdadradio.com so you can listen to it again because one of the ways you get ahead is repetition. If you listen to this program again, you'll pick up something even more. But more importantly, that's what friends are for. Have your friends and business associates and family listen to this program because what Sean Acor is talking about, he is the guru of happiness. He's talking about how it actually limits your potential to be an A student. That's what he's saying, because you have to claw your way to the very top all by yourself, but that limits your potential and you stay small. Any comments, Kim? When we were talking to Sean in Big Potential, about Big Potential, 
it reminded me of in school. Um, I went to school for half a year at the University of California at Santa Barbara, and I was only there a half a year. And one of the reasons I left was because the definition of success and achievement was you got to get to the top. You got to do it by yourself. You got to be better than everybody else. And what was happening is these students were actually sabotaging each other's school projects so that they could be at the top, so that they could get ahead. So there was no cooperation. There was no collaboration. It was dog-eat-dog. Dog. It was a zero-sum game. I'm going to win. You're going to lose. And the, comp- the the anxiety, the stress was through the roof. And, and I Sean, got out of there. And, Sean, the other thing we talk about, because it makes me nauseous, is in the Asian culture, they talk about these tiger moms, and these tiger right. moms just drive their kids to be the best, the best, the best, the best. And what you're saying, that that not be necessarily happy. Is that correct? That, that's absolutely right. In fact, the happiness advantage is a critique of the tiger mom, right? Because right. tiger mom says, if I push you really hard right now, man, you're going to thank me someday because you're going to be so happy when you go to Harvard, right? But then I work with those Harvard students, and 80% of them will go through depression. And they're good at doing things individually, but as soon as you put them out on a team or they're trying to build a company, all of those successes, I mean, we spend the first 22 years of our life judging people based upon their individual metrics when for the rest of their life their their success will be based upon these interconnected traits right so i love that story you were telling him about uh about going to school and and the competition that's there there's one of my favorite studies i talk about in um, big potential is uh, a study about chickens where they were looking to see how do you make the most competitive chicken and we live in a world where we think it's survival of the fittest so If I was raising chickens, what I would do is I'd find the highest producing chickens, I'd breed them, and then find the highest producing chickens out of that group, breed them again, and do that for six generations, and then I'd have these super producer chickens. And when they did the study, it turns out they had to stop the study in generation five because all but three of the chickens had been pecked to death, and those three chickens that were left were completely featherless because they had been pecking at one another. Oh, jeez. So, oh, my gosh. I kind of like that story, Sean. Even the chickens. Sean. Even it, the chickens. Isn't that amazing? And they were, they were producing 160% fewer eggs than the normal group. And so what, what I think this says, is, and every, you know, we, we all know those people that are you know, pecking people to death in the, yep. the workplace, and we've got chickens like that around us. But what I think Big Potential is about is when I looked at big data, which we finally have now, all this data that shows these interconnections, what we realized was we were wrong. It's not survival of the fittest. It's actually survival of the best fit. Right. What, what, what we say, there was, like, was it Jay Gould or something years ago? He, he said, it's not survival of the fittest. It's those that survive that fit into the changing environment. That's and, right. And, and he says the specialist cannot adapt to the new environment. So like a person like me, you know, where I'm not tech savvy, I barely use a cell phone, I'm better being in a team where there are people who are tech savvy and all this other stuff, so we can all do better as a team. But survival of the fittest is what our academic or our, or our whole, we call it anthropological studies have been about. It's not true. Well, And that's what you're saying, Sean, too, is when kids come out of school, what makes them successful in school doesn't make them successful in the real world because they don't fit in because they have to do it on their own and they don't fit into a team. They don't know how to work with people. They don't know how to manage people. Is, is that all part of just being more and more less fit to survive or something? I don't know. I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of changes happen within our society right now that we're, we're, we're all having to adapt to. Um, I think more what we're seeing is a change in the model of what we need to be pursuing. I think a lot of the that fragility that we're seeing that requires us to feel afraid of the world, I think it's because we're hyper comparing and hyper competing. Mm. I mean, I think kids at an earlier and earlier age are getting more and more homework, which means they're forced to trade work in isolation um, with what used to be, you know, time spent connecting to other people. Like we're spending more and more time on a phone by ourselves instead of spending time with our friends outside, right? So I think as a result of that, we're losing social connection, even in a hyper-connected world. And then we go on social media, and then we hyper-compare with everyone else. So I think there's got to be a different model. And I think we're actually seeing it. You were talking about Stephen Jay Gould's work. We're seeing it come out of nature. My favorite study in Big Potential is the one about the lightning bugs, where this biologist was going down the river in Indonesia and looked up at one of the mangrove trees right at dusk that was lining this river, and the entire tree lit up. And it went dark all at the same time. And then every tree along the river 
for 100 yards did the same thing. And it reali- he realized that they were actually lightning bugs they were covering these trees, but that they were lighting up and going dark at the exact same time. Like for the rest of us, whenever we see lightning bugs, they're kind of doing it randomly by themselves. Um, so we told everyone the story, and biologists didn't believe them, because why in the world would lightning bugs light up with one another? How could they even time it? And it turns out MIT figured out what was going on, that if a lightning bug lights up by himself, his success rate, which is reproduction, his success rate is 3%. But I mean, if you light up... He didn't have any sex, is what you're saying. <laughs> He didn't have. He only had three percent chances. Well, that's, I'm going to cooperate much more now. <laughs> yeah. Well, get this. So, the group that was lighting up with the other lightning bugs it turns out their success rate was 86 percent. So, the reason why I think that this is incredible is out of nature, you're seeing such a different model. What you're seeing is when they lit up together, they weren't afraid of one another. They were actually able to space themselves out enough so that they could maximize their resources. But get this. Because they lit up together, lightning bugs from three miles away would fly in towards those mangrove trees because it was so bright they could see it. And then more lightning bugs bring their light. And to me, when you look at the most successful companies, entrepreneurs, individuals, they have that ability. They have that ability to not just create a light for themselves and hold on to it in the dark. They're able to light up with other people so that that light becomes stronger so that everyone's success rate rises. It's a great idea. <laughs> I kind of like it. Okay, once again, Robert Kiyosaki, the Mystery Radio Show. We're talking to a special guest today, Sean Akor. He is the guru of happiness. His latest, his first book was The Happiness Advantage. And it's about how being happy gives you a huge advantage. And his next book, or his latest book, is called Big Potential how transforming the pursuit of success raises our achievement, happiness, and well-being. It just was released January 30th, 2008. And Sean Acor is A-C-H-O-R, S-H-A-W-N, Acor. I highly recommend this book, Big Potential, because as you know, for those who listen to Rich Dad, most people quit their jobs to become small entrepreneurs, and they never reach their big potential because of what they were taught either at school, at home, or in religion, or whatever they've been taught. And what Sean is saying basically is what we've been saying is that, you know, business is a team sport, so is being happiness. And a lot of my my generation, the baby boomers, are getting ready to retire. And I think the potential of dying early is increases if you sit there all by yourself, you chase a little white ball around with other bored people. So anyway, it's a very important book, Big Potential, and it's how to be happy because happy is a team sport. Any comments, Kim? Yeah, so, so Sean, I have a question, you know, all about the individual achievement, and that's kind of what we've been processed to do and programmed to do. So in your research and study and all, you're saying that it's cooperation, it's your social network, it's collaboration that ra- raises all boats. So where does somebody, give me a, a starting point. So I've been raised to be the best and to be the top of the team and, the, I mean, to be the top of the tier and to strive and, and to operate in the zero-sum world. Where, where do I, what do I do? <laughs> I think it's a great question. And that's part of the reason I, I, I spent so much time working on Big Potential is because I felt like I was starting to have these realizations but didn't know what to do about it, right? Like if the whole world seems to be acting at an individual level, yes. how do we change? So my favorite study, and I think it undergirds everything that you two have been saying and doing, is they found that if I look up at a – these are two researchers from the University of Virginia. They found if I look up at a mountain that I'm supposed to climb – and I'm judging it by myself, my brain perceives that hill as being 20 to 30% steeper than if I was looking at a mountain or hill the same size while standing next to a friend. So what we're finding is our brain literally transforms the challenges in front of us based upon whether or not we think we're alone or we think we're doing this with other people. So the first thing I would do is make sure that you're surrounding yourself with positive influences, right? Make sure that the people that you're listening to, the people that you're watching, the people that you're reading, that those are people that are actually causing you to become a better person. Um, the, the people that are around you are not the ones to bring out the stress in you, but the ones that are bringing out the best in you. So look around at your, I mean, there's been people that have been saying, Jim Rohn used to say that, uh, that, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, based upon this big data research, we're finding that a lot of your personality and successes is predicted by the eight people 
that you spend the most time with that are not in your family. So look to see who those people are and see if they're actually a positive influence. Well, what happens you. if you have nobody around you? <laughs> okay, right. once again, it's Robert Kiyosaki, <laughs> the Rich Dad Radio Show. We're talking to Shawnee Kaur, the guru of happiness. His first book was The Happiness Advantage. His next book is called Big Potential, How to How Transfer in the Pursuit of Happiness. Pursuit of Success Raises Our Achievement, Happiness, and Well-Being. Like I said earlier, in the uh, I've already called Blair Singer. We're working on a project called Super Entrepreneur. Because a super entrepreneur, the job is to take a small entrepreneur and turn them into a big entrepreneur. But you do that via cooperation. But unfortunately, most small entrepreneurs are supermen, the, you know, the, the lone ranger. they got to do it on their own. They do everything by themselves. And every time I talk to people in the S Quadrant, for those who read the Cash Flow Quadrant book, they cannot get out of that mindset. They, they have to be the best. they got to do it on their own. If you want it done right, do it by yourself. So that's why this is a very important book, Big Potential. If you're stuck and small and want to be happier and richer, please get Big Potential. Sean's uh, website is goodthinkinc.com. And we come back, we've been going into the five hidden keys to achieving more success, happiness, and sustaining positive change. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors have a great gift for you. Visit richdadadvisors.com and receive five free reports on business and investing success. Five free reports that can help you right now. And while there, check out the Author's Choice audio series. Audio is a great way to learn. And for as little as 99 cents, you can download key chapters from all the Rich Dad Advisor books. You can listen to The Myths and Magic of Real Estate Investing, Seven Steps to Limited Liability, The Four Pillars of Investing, Team Code of honor or the psychology of debt among other great audios for pennies you can power up your skills for getting out of the rat race so please visit richdadadvisors.com for your five free reports and your powerful and affordable audio chapters that's richdadadvisors.com for great information that can help you right now this is the rich dad radio show the good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, you listen to this program anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android, and all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. You can hear this podcast by simply going to richdadradio.com because repetition is how we learn best. If you listen to this program again, you'll learn even more. But most importantly, this this thing is about what friends are for and family are for and business associates are for. And so you go to richdadradio.com and have your friends, family, and business partners listen to this program and discuss it. Not only will you be happier, but you'll probably be richer. So, Kim, any comments you want to make about Sean? Well, um, first of all, Sean, thank you for the work you do because it's very, very important. It's very powerful. The happiness advantage, again, I'm going to highly, highly recommend that. I, I refer to it often, and I'm excited to get through all of, the, all of big potential because I think it's some key points you make. And, you know, one of the things that we well, it's, say— It's going to be a required study for our group. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the questions I have, Sean, is one thing that we often say here at Rich Dad is one of the hardest things about business is people dealing with people. So to go from a small business to a big business, you have got to embrace people and understand how to work with them, how to manage them, how to build a team of people. But if we're brought up in an environment of got to be the best, got to do it on my own, how does, how does somebody make that transition? Where do they begin? That's a great question. That's one of the ones we were really researching out of these companies and with these entrepreneurs to see what would work. And we found some things that actually did. So I think it's kind of a three-layered approach. One of them is, you're right, that working with other people is probably the hardest part of business, but it's also the one that has the most fruits in terms of potential. Um, so the very first thing we do is we try to surround ourselves with a positive system. So we look for people that are not taking energy from you, but are actually returning energy back to you. And you know those types of people. The more oh, yes. we surround ourselves or hire people that are like that, the easier it is on that people management side to be able to create that positive change. Because then what you have is instead of trying to be a superstar all by yourself, 
you're actually part of a star system. We know that stars by themselves collapse in upon themselves, but when you have a whole star system, you can actually rely on them because when you're exhausted or you've been working too hard, you've got other people who can feed you energy instead of keeping asking and asking all the time. But I think connected to that is the flip side of it, right? If we're going to be surrounded by other people, then we also need to be able to defend the system as well, which means we need to be able to find ways of being able to either to separate ourselves from people who are currently being negative or to be able to increase our, our emotional immune system around them. Um, so one of the things I, that we've been saying in this research is that if you stop smoking, your health will improve, but you'll never see your full health if everyone around you is smoking as well. So if we can change the people that are around us, we can change some of those positive or negative influences, but we also need to be able to find a way to protect our brain. So one of the things I do is I set uh, some, like, I practice individual positive habits, like thinking of three things I'm grateful for each day, or exercising, or writing a positive email each day, or two minutes of meditation or attention training. Those things done by myself, those positive habits that we've been hearing that were coming out of the happiness advantage, those are the very things that help us to defend ourselves when we're surrounded by people that are negative. So if somebody on my team is having a really bad day, or they're negative, or I'm dealing with a frustrated customer, if I'm going into that without having inoculated myself by thinking of things that I'm grateful for or seeing the meaning involved with my life, I'm going in completely defenseless. But if I have those things, I can say that part of my reality is negative right now, but I also have this whole big part of my reality that's positive, and I have an entire positive team that I can lean upon. That actually allows us to be able to defend that system a little bit better. Um, we use things like moats, mental moats. So we found that the weakest t times of the day for people are right as they're going to sleep, the last 30 minutes, and the first 30 minutes they wake up in the morning. But that's right when I would go on social media or right when I'd read the news and I'd get all upset or I'd start to see all this negativity, and that's when my body has the least amount of defense against it. So you just create a moat around your day where for those 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening, you actually protect yourself from any of that negative information or from reading those emails that allow you so that once you see that negative information, you can actually deal with it with a full brain instead of a half brain, um, which has been really helpful. And the last thing is how we deal with those people. So I think we've created a system of survival of the fittest because we keep praising people in these ways that we don't even realize. I have a, like, I have a three-year-old son, and I found myself being like, oh, you're the fastest kid out there, or you're better at tennis than anyone, or like constantly comparing him to other people. So instead of saying, wow, your tennis swing was great, I'm comparing him to other people. So then he's judging his success and happiness continually in comparison to other people instead of in terms of those strengths. I think that there's a better approach. As we're praising people, we do two things. One of them is that we praise without the comparison. Like you worked incredibly hard on being able to get that sale or get that project done. Instead of being able to say, wow, you were the, you know, sold much more than everyone else on that team during that period of time, or that you are the smartest person on the team. Those types of things actually break down the system as opposed to building it back up. And then the other thing is we praise the base. And what that means is instead of creating a praise that gets absorbed by just the top performers, you actually praise the people who got them there. So we're working with some large companies right now, and they always bring up their top salespeople up on stage. And then the 95% of the rest of the company just watches and sits disengaged. So instead of just inviting the top salespeople and the top performers to go on these amazing retreats and go up on stage, we actually have them invite the top performers to invite the person who got them there, the supporter, the person on their team who filled out the contracts or the person on their support team that was able to get all these phone calls together. Whoever their top supporter was, we actually redirect the praise back towards them because that praise that goes towards the base, those supporters, is going to make the people on top do better as well, but it actually includes more people involved in the process, so you're improving the entire ecosystem of potential around you. So it's that's, about that's, that's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely Thank brilliant. And what's guys, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. You can listen to this program anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Android. You can listen to this program, again, at richdadradio.com, and share this with the people that you want to praise, the people you want to thank for you getting to where you are, because that's what the key to being happy. Once again, our guest today is Sean Acor, goodthinkinc.com. Please get his book, Big Potential, how to, you know, stop being a small little guy, you know, how to make him bigger by being happier. Uh, before we end, can you go to the five hidden keys of achieving, you know, happiness and success and all that? 
So we found that the, the people who actually achieve their big potential, they surround themselves with positive people. They enhance people using praise that is not comparison-based. They extend power out to other people, so they invite them to uh, be involved in the process. They, invite, they give them power. They are able to delegate information to other people. Um, they're able to defend the system from the negative threats. And they're able to sustain the positive change by by celebrating the positive wins as a group. So instead of just celebrating as like I did that by myself, being able to celebrate it with a group creates that culture that allows for those successes to continue in the future. That's fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. So I have another question, Sean, um, because we're this world is very competitive, and there's there's a very positive side I think to competition as well. So how do you determine? Com- competition that's healthy and competition that's not healthy? What, what is best for business? I think we want competition that encourages performance, right? If I play basketball with people that aren't really trying, I don't play very well, right? We want people to try, but we want them to enjoy the competition and that people aren't diminished by it, right? That they can be involved in the process. And even if they're not the top person, they can find value and meaning where they are in the process. That was partly the happiness advantage. We found that if you could feel joy as you're moving towards your potential, instead of only joy if you're the LeBron James or the you know Kobe Bryant of the world, what we're finding is that if you can find joy there, it turns out happiness is the greatest competitive advantage in the modern economy. It starts with happiness. The more happy you are, the better your chance of success in all realms. I think that's it. And then the one thing I would add to that that I think Big Potential is all about is that I used to tell people I thought happiness was an individual choice, and I don't think it is anymore. I think happiness is a choice, but it's an interconnected one. When we choose to be more positive, when we choose to include others on this journey towards success, it turns out that we change their ability to become positive. We allow them to have the license to be grateful, to be connected to other people. And I think that that's how we change the system from a few fireflies lighting up individually to an entire community of of people lighting up in the darkness. And is that part of what you call the virtuous cycle? That's exact. The virtuous cycle is that, you know, vicious cycles is where you don't like your job, so you don't try as hard, so you get worse reviews. The, The virtuous cycle is the flip. We find that if every time you have a success, if you invest it back into that system, that ecosystem of potential with other people, then your successes continually rise and build upon one another, allowing success and happiness to become easier and easier, which is exactly it, right? Like if I make somebody around me positive, it's so much easier for me to be happy when people around me are grateful and positive as well. And then likewise, so it actually builds upon one another so that you can actually create a system that's stronger and stronger over time. So what do you say about this? Because I've always said this. I'm not a golfer because I'm horrible on my own. But I was pretty good as a team sport. Like I, my sport was rugby. You know, and I rode. So those are all team sports. And I've known my friend Blair Singh and I, who were part of Super Entrepreneur, we were developing the Super Entrepreneur program. We have this guy. He's a great teacher, but he's the lone wolf. You know, mm-hmm. he's Superman. He is the most lonely man we know. Brilliant, but lonely. If people like that are listening right now, they're the lone wolf, they're the superstar, they want to do it on their own, take a few minutes and explain. Talk to them for a while. I'd say that you're missing out on your big potential. I'd say that while you've been able to achieve some success alone, you're limited by uh, other people. If you look through history at the great people, the great people were always surrounded by somebody who lifted up their work or talked about it or wrote about it. I mean, Edison was known for, you probably know this, but Edison, you know, had 400 patents to his name, but historians have struggled to find a single one that he actually invented. It was his (laughs) team that he was able to create. And I think that that's the genius that you two have and that we've seen from top performers, which is Edison was a genius, but he was a genius at getting the people around him to be able to perform at their highest level. So if you're a lone wolf, you're missing out on being able to impact the world as much as you could when you have the magnifier effect of those people that are around you as well. And we also feel lonely doing we feel lonely during that process. So not only are you not as successful, we found that the greatest predictor of long term happiness is your social connection. It's the breadth, depth and meaning in your social relationships. We can actually predict this is my favorite statistic the social connection is as predictive of how long you will end up living as obesity, 
high blood pressure or smoking. Oh. So we can actually extend your life as much by getting someone to stop smoking as getting them to actually create a, a social support network around them. So that's what you, you were talking about. You know, depression is actually a vicious cycle because you, yes. you try harder all on your own and you get more depressed. You try harder on and you get more depressed. And a virtuous cycle would be to step outside of that and start coming into it, uh, acquiring or stepping out and meeting more people, right? That kind of breaks that cycle of depression. Yeah, I went through two years of depression while I was at Harvard, and I kept thinking, well, I've got to solve this all by myself, and I can do this all by myself. And I hated the thought that I might have to burden other people with it. But the turning point for me that got me out of the depression was when I opened up to my friends and told them I was actually depressed. And right. when I told them that I needed them, because as soon as I did that, they then told me things that they were dealing with so we could actually mutually support one another. And it wasn't just me trying to lift myself out. We were lifting each other from a negative space to a positive space. So the entire choice to move away from that depression became easier and easier. So I think that that's true not only for happiness. I think it's true exactly what you're saying for business. That right. Both business and happiness are team sports. And if we're really trying to achieve our highest level of success, we need to be connected to other people instead of looking at those hills alone. So once again, we listen to Sean Acor, two books. is The Happiness Advantage, and his latest book is, book is Big Potential. His website is goodthinkinc.com. And so, Sean, I want to thank you for your contribution to not only my life, and because when I'm happier, Kim's happier too. <laughs> but, uh, We're all I've, happier I, when I, one of us is happier. <laughs> I've, I've, I've learned a lot from all you know, two of your books now, so thank you very there much. There actually is a third book that you wrote too, oh. Sean, called um, After the Happiness Advantage. You wrote Before Happiness, The Five Hidden Keys to oh, Achieving book. Success, okay. Spreading Happiness, and Sustaining Positive Change. So there's, there's three, three books. excellent books, yes. All right. So when we Thank come back, so we're going to the next part of our program. It's called Ask Robert. You're listening to The Rich Dad Radio Show with Robert Kiyosaki. Don't be like Charlie. Charlie is that do-it-yourselfer who does himself in. Do-it-yourself is good for tile and grout. It is not good for asset protection. Charlie thought he'd save a few dollars forming his LLC online. With no guidance, he did it wrong. When he sold the property, he lost thousands and thousands of dollars. He did himself in by trying to do it himself. Don't burn yourself. Use Corporate Direct to set up and maintain your LLCs and corporations. Corporate Direct is owned and operated by attorney and rich dad advisor, Garrett Sutton. Garrett wrote the bestsellers, Loopholes of Real Estate and Start Your Own Corporation. He is Robert Kiyosaki's attorney for asset protection. He and his team will do it right. Visit them at CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. Mention Rich Dad and receive $100 off your formation fee. That's CorporateDirect.com. CorporateDirect.com. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Advisors have a great gift for you. Visit RichDadAdvisors.com and receive five free reports on business and investing success. Five free reports that can help you right now. And while there, check out the Author's Choice audio series. Audio is a great way to learn. And for as little as 99 cents, you can download key chapters from all the Rich Dad Advisor books. You can listen to The Myths and Magic of Real Estate Investing, Seven Steps to Limited Liability, The Four Pillars of Investing, Team Code of honor or the psychology of debt among other great audios for pennies you can power up your skills for getting out of the rat race so please visit richdadadvisors.com for your five free reports and your powerful and affordable audio chapters that's richdadadvisors.com for great information that can help you right now your financial education continues. Now back to Robert Kiyosaki and the Rich Dad Radio Show. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news about bad news about money. Once again, you listen to this program anytime, anywhere on richdadradio.com, on iTunes or Android. All of our programs are archived, which means you can listen to it over and over again at richdadradio.com because as Sean Acor, A-C-H-O-R, talks about happiness is a team sport, but so is business. Any comments, Kim? 
Well, you know, one of the biggest takeaways I've had, and we we say this all the time, is you know you want to surround yourself with positive people, people that lift you up and not drag you down. Um, you you and I both made the decision, Robert, to get the negative people out of our lives years and years and years ago. Is that why you filed for a divorce? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, there's times as a couple, there's times yeah. I get I go more negative than you. Oh, I'm pretty Kim positive. I'm me. pretty positive person, but one of the biggest takeaways. But you have to be more positive than me because I go negative real fast. <laughs> so one of the big takeaways was number one: you you got to be aware of who you're spending your time with, and and pay attention. Be just be aware: are they positive? Are they negative? Are they bringing you up? Are they pulling you down? You just that alone, as Sean says, your social network and the people you hang out with are one of the biggest biggest components to your success and your happiness. So Business that alone and is happiness. a huge takeaway. Yeah, business and happiness, our team sports. So you can submit your questions to Ask Robert at richdadradio.com. And Melissa, please start with the first question. Okay, Robert, our first question today comes from Will in Tempe, Arizona. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He says, I'm doing a lot of personal improvement work, and I'm loving the direction I'm moving in. The problem is my family is still stuck in old habits, and I'm finding it harder and harder to spend time with them. I don't want to lose them. We are just in different places now in our lives. How do I hold on to my good attitude and work and still appreciate them in my life? Well, welcome to the real world. <laughs> because, you know, I, I don't, I've never heard, I think, you know, an oxymoron is oxymorons, two words that, that make no sense, like jumbo shrimp and military intelligence. Another one, another oxymoron is family vacation. I don't know how you can go on vacation with your family, man. You got to have willpower like I never believe. But anyway, it's a very good question. And my answer to you is that you've got to get bigger. And what I mean by that is, and I, I, I struggle with this all the time because around certain people, I get smaller, I get petty, I get bitchy, I get to be a wimp. And the, the beauty that Kim has, Kim just gets more loving. And I've noticed that with her. Whereas I want to run away from any situation that's kind of uncomfortable. Kim just gets more loving, more generous, more kind. Now, but that's also what Sean, I believe, is talking about in Big Potential, is that we have to find ways of us to, us to get bigger than ourselves and bigger than our problems. Because if we're not bigger than our problems or our challenges, the challenge, the problem, or the family kicks our butt. I know for me to grow, I had to get bigger inside, which means being bigger than the pettiness around me. Any comments, Kim? Yes, and I, I would say to Will, congratulations, because one of the key points to the whole thing is he's becoming aware that his family isn't as supportive and as positive and as uplifting as he is becoming. So that awareness alone says, oh, I've got to pay attention to what they're saying and not automatically just believe what they say or do what they say. So I think the awareness alone is 90% of it for Will. So I think he's right on track. Well, Kim and I were at a party the other night, and this friend, of course, is an A student, was criticizing another friend. Yes. And I wanted to chop his, because he's an attorney, I was going to chop his neck off. And I said, just get bigger than this attorney friend who's criticizing another dear friend and just allow him to criticize and not jump on his case. So as Kim knows, I was having a hard time struggling and squirming, not wanting to jump down this guy's throat, but I had to get bigger insight, more loving, more accepting, uh, more spacious. Next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Emma in Seattle, Washington. Favorite book, Rich Woman. Oh, hello, Emma. Can't wait to talk to you. Yes. Yeah, so Emma says, Robert and Kim, I follow and admire your teachings. I know what you say about the importance of team. My question is, how and where do you suggest people find the best mentors? I remember in Sunday school, it was a story of the three wise men and the birth of Jesus. And I'm not very religious. I'm not pushing really? religion. <laughs> That's okay. You take over. <laughs> no, go ahead. So, yeah. No, but the story is, is that our job is to go search for the next teacher. And they're not in schools. Let me tell you something. I have only met two teachers in schools I respected, only two. But the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad was me going to search of my next mentor, my next teacher. Because my poor dad, bless his heart, good guy, PhD, but he's an academic. I was never going to be an academic. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. So your responsibility for an individual responsibility is go search be a wise person, not a wise ass like me, 
but go searching for that next mentor. Like him and I, one of our best mentors was Frank Crary. He taught us how to take companies public through the Toronto Stock Exchange. You know, I mean, most guys never take a company public, but it was, a, it, was it stretched us, huh? Oh, it definitely stretches. And this goes right into the work you're doing right now and what you're working on right now. There's there's fake teachers and there's real teachers. So when we're talking about mentors, we're talking about real teachers. And a real teacher is somebody who's doing what it is you want to learn to do. And they do it all the time. And they've been very successful at it. Where a fake teacher might be in academia all their life. They might be teaching you how to buy a piece of real estate, but they don't own a piece of real estate. They've never bought or sold real estate. They just know in their head how to do it, but they've never done it. So when you're seeking out your mentors, you know, we simply, Frank was one of the best. He he took 70-some companies public on the, the Canadian Stock Exchange, and we wanted to learn about how he did it. So we see, you you sought out somebody who was doing what it is you wanted to learn to do. I That's do that, a real I do, teacher. I, I do that pretty regularly. All the time. I'm all of our teachers. But the other way, teachers. one of the things about the Rich Dad Radio Program is the way you find a mentor is listening to the people who write, wrote, wrote these books. Like, you know, Sean Accor is the guru of happiness. You want to be happy, I'd read his book. You don't have to go to a seminar, but his book goes into more detail on it. And we've had some really great people like James Rickards and uh, on and on and on and on. These guys are my mentors. And I love having the Rich Dad Radio Show because this is how I learn. I really have very low respect for anybody who doesn't practice what they preach. I mean, that comes down to it. You know, like most of my school teachers don't practice what they preach. My accounting teacher was not an accountant. And you'd be surprised how many accounting teachers have never practiced accounting. That's why I have Tom Wheelwright on this program. So you gotta be discerning and be careful who messes with your brain and you have to find real teachers who do the real thing. Next question, Melissa. Our next question comes from Spencer in San Antonio, Texas. Favorite book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. How do you both start your day? What is your routine, and do you believe in the law of attraction? I, I sort of believe in the law of attraction, but I think that comes from that book, The Secret, which was pretty lightweight from my opinion, but if you liked it, that was fine. But the book I recommend for those who understand, because Sean Accord talked about it also, it's called Miracle Morning, and the person who wrote it is called Hal Elrod. Miracle Mornings is exactly the same thing that Sean Accord says. So Hal Elrod was a guest on our program, and you can ask him. I practice what Sean teaches me every single, every I would say, day. six days out well, of a week. almost every, but for, you've been doing this for two years now. Yeah. But, uh, Melissa, how can they go to, to richdadradio.com, and how can they find the interview with Hal Elrod and Miracle Morning? So they can go on to richdadradio.com or iTunes, and they can look up the Rich Dad Radio show and search for Hal Elrod. And a uh, great listen on that show there. That's a great yeah. show. I, I Every one of my people in, in the Super Entrepreneur Program, they have to do what, what Hal does. Mm -hmm. So every morning I get up, I meditate, then I read you know, the first thing I want to do is go through my to-do list. I have a to-do list. I got to get this done today. I get up and I do my to-do list, but I don't take care of me. So I get up now. It's a half hour of meditation, half hour of exercise, half hour of reading. And the thing that's really strange now is getting to be two hours and two and a half hours now because it's the most important thing day of my moment of my day is how do I start my day? Because how you start your day is how you start your life. Any comments, Kim? No, I've seen you do this, and I, I'm, and I have done how. So I've seen you doing this for two years, and I've seen, the, I've seen a huge change as well. Um, I'm not as diligent as you. I like, I do love what um, Sean Acor said about the last thirty minutes of the day and the first thirty minutes of the day. Because when I do get up in the morning, I do like to read a little bit from a person, from a, you know, personal development book, an uplifting book. Um, yeah, don't read um, the news or watch the stock no, market. That'll no, just no, get no. you all riled no. up. Or sometimes I'll wake up in the morning I'll, and I'll say, okay, so the three things I'm grateful for right now is it could be the pillow I'm laying my head on. <laughs> it's simple. But just being aware of that, I'm just now getting into a regular meditation, 30-minute meditation, which is new for me. I've done two-minute meditations, but now 30-minute meditation, and I'm noticing a difference already. So for me... One of the takeaways from this program, and thank you for the question, is that I, I want to make this more of a ritual and a daily a ritual, a habit in my yeah. life. So Miracle Morning again by Hal Elrod. Go to richdadradio.com and find Hal Elrod and Miracle Morning. So once again, I want to thank, Sean, uh, thank you all for your questions and for listening to this program. 
Thank you for listening to this program.